Hi everyone. Hi guys. We're back again in the loft. Yeah. Um, so, so today, this this is like an epic thing, isn't it? It's this a pretty like epic. Biblical in its nature. It's a big challenge. So it's it's, yeah. it's an impossible challenge. It's a few say. people have, have um, requested via uh, uh, Instagram and YouTube, and so this is our. 10 fragrances for life. So keep only 10 fragrances, which is a bit different to our top 10 fragrances. Yeah, it's this. It, I, I took the, the approach, and I don't know if this is right, but which fragrances I either have replaced and had multiple bottles of, or will now in future going forward replace as soon as they run out. And it, it could change. I mean, some of these are actually, this week I've actually changed my mind on. I've definitely changed a few times. Yeah. So, well, what I've gone for is kind of more. If I can, you know, if I can only keep ten fragrances, so if I had to have a wardrobe of ten uh, fragrances, what would I choose? So it's a little bit different in that, you know, I like I quite like rose, but I thought I don't want to have four rose fragrances. Yeah. You know, I quite like kind of ambery, but of I don't want to wardrobe. have four of those things. So you, I found myself having to think. I love that one, but I've also got this. So. Yeah. I've got a ditch one. And, I, and there were a few, I'll say afterwards, but there were a few I can't believe I've left out because a few oh, likewise. Uh, yeah. fragrances I really love I didn't include in the end. But anyway. And some of these are actually not, this is going to sound really weird, some of these are not like big hitters for me at all, but they're things that are kind of like loyal companions that have yeah. just well, that, have that stayed with me on my little fragrance journey. Certainly I've gone back a bit. Yeah. And, um, anyway, let's get started. Let's in. do it. Okay, so number, first, number, number one. one, I'm going over here, but I, I'll be right back. Um, I'm going to start with one of the first sort of slightly weird niche things I, I bought, um, which I know I'll replace when it runs out, which it's nowhere near doing, which is this little guy. What is it? Ding! Oh, yes. I love it. It's, it's I'd weird. Love to, I'd love to spray this again. Can Go for it. it. It's one of the most unusual things I once upon a time had. Now I've got some things which are a bit more punchy, a bit more challenging. But I remember the first time I wore this, I remember thinking, Wow, okay, there's there's the art of concept in perfumery. This is and a niche picture. perfume, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's hard to wear. I don't wear it very often, but I know that mm. if you know if I lost so, this like, I'd so replace it in a heartbeat. You get this cardboard thing, you get this really really animalic yeah. thing. Toffee apple, elephant yeah. dung, gourmet leather, quality. caramel. It is this you know, you can see it's got this kind of picture of things going on at the at the circus and that's it's supposed to kind of capture that. Yeah. So unusual, isn't it? I, th I would, I would happily say, yeah, I th I, it's very elegant and beautiful in a way, and I would say that this could be, this could be the representative of L'Artisan yeah, yeah, as, yeah, yeah. as a niche house. If you were going to say, pick your most or represent, sort of you know, out there thing, you know, to just give an example of niche. Yeah, this is not designer. A designer would never do this in a million no, years. No, no, it has a concept. You know, it has, it has an Great image fragrance. in mind, which is, which is beautiful. Yeah, um, and you know, if I suddenly were to drop this. I know yeah. I'd replace it. Yeah. Because I love it. And that's probably why I don't wear it very often actually, because it's just once in a blue moon I think zing today. Yeah. Good choice. So there we are, it's been reformulated. So if you can get that one with a white thing, yeah. um, then I would recommend Rather than it. the new black bottles. Yeah. Which are all slightly pale shadow. Yeah, well. Their former shit elephant dung self. That's a, that's a sad time. Yeah. Right. What's your number what two? have you got? Yeah. Oh we're doing them all in yeah, one yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting. Okay, yeah, this yeah. is great. This is amazing. Um, for number two, again, actually sticking with the similar theme of, of sort of early things that I got, you know, I'm all about the nostalgia, a little bit of Gorilla, and you're going to know what this is already, Breath of God. Yes. Look at uh, that. Again, this is an, an, one I remember you, you first sprayed on me in this very loft, and it's kind of when I was just getting into, you know, exploring these niche fragrances. Again, this is one which is absolutely niche. I mean, it's kind yeah. of crazy that there's so much going on. Oh. I mean, Dan's got a bottle of this now, and I, I already Great have fruit, a replacement smoke, bottle of it. Incense, yeah. leather, like bizarre <laughs> combination. And every time I wear it, I mean, I've finished off this Barbecue bottle. Barbecue meat. This is my second bottle yeah. of, of of this fragrance. It's almost gone. I've got another one at home, it which is in the newer thing, the newer bottles. Is it just a black? Just a sort of bottle with yeah, a white label. Oh, white, yeah. And it does smell again. It does smell slightly different. Um, but I've, I, mean, I love I love the boldness of it. Bubble gum. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, bubble gum, yeah. melon, ham. One day it's really fresh and feels like a sort of barber shoppy fougere. Another day it feels like a sort of teeny bopper sweet bubblegum thing. Yeah. And it feels a bit dirty. So yeah. I love it. That will stay in the collection as well. Um, I can't get it back in the thing, but that doesn't matter. Number three. It's, it's, you know, it's so hard. I've, I've got things in here, but I... It is, I certainly like, chopped and changed quite a lot doing this. 
yeah, it's just it's really it's tricky to kind of keep a common thread. And number three, well, this bad boy here, oh, Trump and Sandalwood. Again, it's just this is my second bottle. It's nearly gone. So you can see the approach I've taken here a little bit. That things that I've replaced yeah, because yeah, I, yeah. I always want them. And in a way, that's that's my answer. That if I've bought it again, I know I want it again. Yeah. So we've, so we've talked about this before. For the money, there isn't a better sandalwood. I mean, I mean, no, it's it's a really beautiful, opulent oh, sandalwood. Yeah, so good. It harkens back to that time when when you'd go and have your wet shave at, at the at the barbers. Mm, it's yeah. elegant. It's English as well. I love the fact that yeah. it's a very traditional English thing. Intensely, intensely English. You know, it's also if you like Chanel Egoist, this is a better, yeah. cheaper version. I of absolutely it. agree. I mean, it's it's incredible that you can get a fra fragrance which costs. 40 quid? Yeah, 40 Something quid like for 50 mil. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing stuff. Yeah. If you're at all interested in sandalwood, just go out and buy it immediately. Really do. I mean, we don't often say that, but just do because it's awesome. I don't know anyone that would buy this and be massively disappointed. No. There's also, uh, it's not just sandalwood, there's a uh, kind of spice. Lots of florals and, kind of, and things. Yeah, florals as well. going on in the mid. Some beautiful rose kind of going on there. Oh. So th 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 these are like loyal friends, really. Yeah. If I had to have a dinner party with fragrances, I'd invite these guys. That'd be lovely. Sure. Um, they wouldn't speak much, but no. they'd be there. Um, next up, this is this is one that, in fact, um, I think Dan probably got before I did, but I have I'm maybe around the same time. Um, and again, it's a similar theme, but it's it's something that oh, speaks to me, yeah. which is the wonderful Mouchoir de Monsieur. Oh, yeah. um, Over a hundred years old now. Was it nineteen oh five? Do you know, I can't remember, 1905, 1904. Yeah, it's, around, it's around that, so it's about um, almost 115 years old. I mean, look at that, it's just, it's elegant in the bottles. bottles. And this, this is my second bottle of this. I've got one at home, which is actually more full. This is the one I've been wearing, because it's older. And so I know it's going to die a death before the other one does. Um, but it's just that beautiful lavender fougere, similar yeah. to Jiki. Um, Oh, it's heavenly. But it's just, it's, it's got amazing. all of that old world opulence. It smells so Which speaks so to me, it really speaks to me. It's so elegant. Yeah. If you've got any kind of interest in fougeres, you have to give it a go. Try There's it. also just a bit of filth as well, just that civet lurking. Tiny little bit of civet, which, you know, which we might talk makes about. Makes it real, it makes it feel human. In a video at some point. Because civet is actually a beautiful, when a beautiful well, yeah. Don't be afraid thing. of it. Oh, Cat it's beautiful. is good. And for me, I love, I love the consistency of, of of this because you know the bottle design hasn't changed in all of that time I don't yeah. think you feel like you're holding a piece of history in your hand yeah. and although times change and we get into new things you know that these guys will always be around hopefully that's the plan anyway right what we are um, to one two three four number five number five is going to be again we, a house we've already discussed but here she is oh. Timbuktu I love her very much Another one that's been with me on the on the fragrance journey. This is bottle number two. So I owned a bottle of this before it was even this design. Um, it was an, it was another thing altogether before um, this one came out. They changed it a little bit, but not massively. It's still got that wonderful oh, mango vetiver mango thing going on. Again, this is another one I remember Beautiful first stuff. smelling when I was here, and I was like, what? Is this? It yeah. smells, it's so transportative. It's so beautiful. You'll never smell that in, so in the high street. But I will say this is one of the ones where it's it's really sad because the new black oh. bottles, it's unrecognisable. It's, it's just real kind of middle of the road vetiver. You've lost all that mango and sparkling yeah. essence that, that's in this one. If you smell the, the the current formulation of this, I can understand why anyone would say I don't get it. I really yeah. can, and I've seen it on Fragrantica. It's really sad because this, this is the stuff. Amazing. It's really beautiful. And if you put them side by side, you wouldn't think it was the same fragrance, yep. which is really a scandal because it's beautiful. I take, you know, being an Egyptian man as well, this takes me to a, a garden somewhere mm. near the Nile. Oh, Ripe mango, it's the incense so is so, it's so lifted. I remember the very first radiant, time I smelled it, I just it? never, never smelled anything like it at all. No, no. And I love smelling it like whenever you wear it. My wife wears it a bit sometimes. But when I, when you catch whiffs on people, it's just amazing. It's so special. beautiful stuff, but intensely wearable. Yeah. It works throughout the year. Yeah, absolutely. It's great in the in, in the in the kind of in the really cold weather. You find that, that incense really comforting. In the really warm weather, the mango feels yeah. fresh. It, and you know somehow Perfect it, it just it fits, only. doesn't it? And let's not forget the master who created this, Bertrand du Chiffon, who we love. Oh my, oh my um, Bertie. He's wonderful. So that's two from the house of L'Artisan. There are no yeah. more from this house for me. Nice. I do own some, but 
those are my, my sort of go-tos. Number, what number am I? Six. six. Number six, I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm kind of working, working backwards, is this little boy here. Oh, nice. Abbey Rouge. Rouge. Just the, again, is this the second girl? Yeah, girl. second girl. The second girl. For me, so far. it's the house that, that really defined perfume and why I love perfume. Yeah. Um, I've only ever had one bottle of the EDP. I have, I have the EDT as well. Uh, yeah, I have not, I don't. But it's just. So uh, this is the EDP. It's yeah. everything I love mm. about Abbey Rouge, plus a little bit more of the suede. Again, the paper thing we were talking about mm. in another video, the sort of papyrus thing. It's a little bit more enveloping, isn't it? Yeah. Whereas the, the, the EDT is a little bit more about bright citrus. This is on the skin. It doesn't pop in the same way that I that must, citrus I does. I swear this. I haven't worn it for a while. You get so caught, it's, that's why it's so interesting beautiful. to do a list like this, you get so caught up with buying new things, trying to find out new oh, things. Oh, absolutely. Whereas it's great to come back to these and things and think, actually, I've consciously avoided. I've consciously avoided things that Lovely are sort of the cutting edge of things at the moment. Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful, it's got all the florals going on. And for, you know, for me, the thing I love here is that it's not, it's not really a flanker as such, but it's, it's maintained it's maintained the original heartbeat of the of the fragrance, which yeah. doesn't always happen. You see some things that, you know, like the Chanel exclusives, the EDTs of all of those pretty much, Coromandel and yeah. Cuir and Sycamore in particular, yeah. they've really lost something in the EDP. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Whereas this doesn't Certainly feel like, Coromandel. It, yeah. it feels like it doesn't have as much of the citrus, but it doesn't feel it's lost. No, it's still got all the spirit and body yeah. and interest. I never wear it and think, yeah. oh, I miss you, Abbey Rouge. Yeah. I hope you'll come back again. Um, so great. And, you know. Amazing. 30 quid, 35 yeah. quid, you can't go wrong. Can't beat it. So I've got one, two, three, four left. That seems about right, doesn't it? Yeah. So. Seven. Number seven. Seven coming up. Yeah. So number yeah. seven, another little oh. gem here, which I don't, it's, it's quite possible Dan has some of these because I think we've. Could be a bit both, of overlap, we've yeah. We've both fallen in love with some oh. some similar things, but I, mean, I love surprisingly, this. I mean, yeah, well, the, you know, we, we've, we've gone on this journey together a lot, haven't we? And, Oh, I mean, you know I, the smell I, yeah, I mean, well. e everybody will kind of know this, and especially if you have any interest in rose, you will have tried Portrait of Lady. It's not just rose, though. It opens with that oh, great so black on. pepper. Yeah, it's big, spicy, bold, Truly opulence. Lost forever, smells yeah. incredible. And again, um, I wasn't a fan of rose. I wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't into my florals once upon a time. And this thing, I, I mean, I'll tell you a very brief story. I smelt this thing, having known it for a while, but not really so known it. I smelt this on a lady that walked past in a pub, and I kept saying to Martha, my partner, I've got to ask her what she's wearing because I know it, but I just can't put my finger on it. And anyway, it was this. Okay, so and I you thought, do, I've got to buy this. You I do, fell in love. It's getting increasingly popular in London, and you do smell it sometimes. More and more. But you it, when, you, when you smell it on somebody, just your nose just pricks yeah, up in a movie. And you know it's, it's always some of, someone of yeah. great class. Great class, great taste, oh, and a, so you know good. a bold, adventurous spirit. Yeah, which is it's why not I for love a it. shy retiring. No, oh, no, it's a big bold rose. Right, so eight, eight. So these are, in fact, three of my more recent purchases. Um, and I'm going to start again. I've talked about this on a video before. Dan has seen this, oh. but I've fallen in love with this in a way I didn't think was possible. And as soon as this bottle runs out, I will buy another one. So this is Mora. Mora by Prin, who we talked about in a recent video. But the colour of that juice is just, it's just so dark. It's amazing. And it, this thing Go is. Go on, let's have another spray. It's all I, florals I and coffee and resins Incense and opium. And I mean, my God. It's all the good things, isn't it? Oh, Dan introduced me to this. Thank you very much for doing that, Dan. Pleasure. Because I fell in love with it straight away. And it, it, it takes me back. I'm a vintage oh. man, in case you yeah. didn't know this. It takes me back about 30 years, 40 years at least. If not even oh further. Oh it's just amazing, isn't, isn't it? Isn't that beautiful? It's just, it's so, it just, it's, it, it smells so expensive, it smells yeah. so rich, so exotic, so indulgent. Oh, it makes no apology for as well. Yeah. Well, it gives you that kind of classic vintage feeling. Oh. I think that's what it is, it, it's the big aldehyde kick oh. at the beginning. I need to buy it's it. sort of it's instant time travel before, and then you get your and then you get everything else that comes in its train. That is amazing. You get the wonderful Gosh. coffee in the middle, civic coffee, in fact, which is even yeah. better. Um, and I said to Dan at the time when you can watch this on a video of ours, in fact, when I smelt this, it reminded me of vintage Derby by Guerlain. Yeah, I know. Yeah, which is a much bigger thing than it is now. I love the current stuff. Um, 
That's immense. But this is special to me, and I, I will love it Enormous, forever. Enormous, amazing. Ever. Mora by Prin Parfum. I'm buying another bottle of that. I might even buy one now while that's still full. You never know when these things in get case it can be recorded, changed yeah. or get taken out of the stores. Amazing stuff. Um, so two more to go. My most recent acquisition is this guy, and I know I will never be without a bottle. Oh. My from it's absolutely Bo Bogwe. Bogwe, yeah. Now, so you were wearing this the other day, and just I was at, yes. At a, at a distance, as I came up to you, what it reminded me of, what I got a waft of, was Kuros. Yeah, well, they're not a million miles away yeah. from this sort of animalic, yeah, slightly urinous. Yeah, I mean, thing going this, on oh, this is obviously far, 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 far high, higher quality, even than the kind of original Kuros. But it's, if if you've smelt Kuros, you know that sort of vibe. Yeah, but it's amazing considering how um, even um, in the cap. I mean, it's, it's just oh, it already fills the yeah. cap. I feel free to give that a, a spritz. Yeah, I will actually. But it, again, sorry. this is this old world vintage Shebra style of fragrance, which it is smells, so beautiful. It smells so. Again, it's another one which just smells so expensive. When you when yeah. you walked in wearing it, it just you know it just smells like a, like a million dollars. Just and it's really not. It's really not that expensive. It, like it's one hundred and forty odd. But, yeah, it's stunning. Oh. Um, but it's such big performance as well. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how much. Oh. It's so complex. Oh, I get such a kind of. It's interesting. I get a really fougere opening. Yeah. Kind of slightly aniseedy, bitter. It gives green. you a little bit of a, a sort of steer in that direction, doesn't it? And some tea as well. Yeah, could, I mean, just, I a, just a bit of tea there. In the, I'm just kidding at the moment. Oh, it's oh, great yeah. stuff. I need to buy this. Yeah, it's like sticking your. I mean, not that I do this, but if you stick your head in a big bag of Tetley tea bags, just yeah, that beautiful yeah, smell. Yeah. And it is a beautiful smell. Yeah. You should all do it. But then, you know, behind it, I'm I'm getting, I'm getting this warm resinous thing. I'm getting lots of big florals that are all competing yeah. without being chaotic. That's an extraordinary fragrance. And there's this sort of trail of civet just running through it, yeah. um, which is sharp and unapologetic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Amazing. I really love right, it. Right, what's your last one? My last one is from the same house, so Dan will know what this is already. Yeah. But again, Mem, another one Dan introduced me to, which I've fallen absolutely head over heels for. And I know I'll never be without a bottle of this as well, because I love lavender. It's one of my favourite notes mm. in perfumery. Um, and this is just the, so this is mem. They're quite the hard to the lids off sometimes. The rubber caps, yeah. So this is kind of like every lavender in the world. So kind of dry lavender, fresh lavender, juicy lavender, bitter lavender. Everything. And then, and then despite that, you can wear it on some days and it do, you wouldn't think it's a lavender thing yeah, at all. It, it becomes changes. a sort of animalic thing. But sometimes, but the other days, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't turn. Yeah, I found it really, kind of got really sticky it's around here. It's a little here. bit of a leaker, I think, perhaps. But oh, this is incredible stuff. The, I mean, the juice here. Is a different thing every time I wear it. Yeah, which I love. I and can't. I, I can't pin it down. And at I, all. I noticed he he posted something on Instagram recently, and he said batches do vary because of yeah. the, you know the nature of the ingredients he uses. They they're not always the same because they're really high, you know, uh, standard of what must include natural ingredients. Yeah. So those do vary a bit, which is why they're so interesting and yeah. Incredible. An incredible, like, but then, the but people, but people, when I wear this, people have uh, remarked upon it, but they, people haven't been put off by it. So this isn't a wacky, no, no. weird niche artisanal hard to wear thing. It's Compared to that, this thing, which is a this bit thing weird, feels yeah. far more conventional. You got some incredible fragrances there. It's a nice selection, and for me, I just went on the on the sheer fact of if I had to keep ten that I think summed up something about me and my little fragrance journey that I'm on. Yeah. These would fit the bill, and things I know I'll buy repeat bottles of. Um, are they? They're not all my most favourite fragrances in the world to wear either. Mm. They're fragr but they're fragrances I know I need. always have to have. That you need. Yeah, them. they're kind of like they're references for me. Right. Let's so see what have you got, Dan? Let's do my ten. But no. I apologise if we have duplications. So it's we, quite possible. we do. We do have a few. So I'm going to get them out of the way. These were the ones I'm going to start with. So the two I'm going to start with are the two fragrances, um, which Joe's already talked about, and I, I would consider these two the ones which got me interested in in fragrance. The first, because I just found it the, so transportative, uh, you know, took me to a completely different place. It's so exotic and so exciting, and I, whenever I smell it now, it still has the same effect. Um, is Timbuktu oh, uh, from the House of Lotus and Parfumer by the amazing Bertrand Duchaufour. 
we've just talked about it, it's Mango Incense Vetiver. Absolute masterpiece, isn't it, really? It's just, I found it so uplifting even now. And the first time I yeah. smelled it, I was like, wow, what is this? Yeah. So if you can find one of these older bottles, which you still can at the moment, especially on eBay, yeah. hunt it out. Uh, I mean, when that goes, you will replace it, won't you? You'll yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm now hunting, I'm actually watching on eBay, even though this is pretty yeah. full, I'm, I'm watching another a full bottle so I can get yeah. another one. Uh, the next one is another one which you've mentioned. It's over 100 years old. It's still one of my very favorite fragrances. Whenever I wear it, I love it. It's one that I especially wear if I'm wearing black tie. I sometimes work mm. at the, the Ritz in London and it's, it's, it feels perfect for the Ritz. That's hand in glove, isn't it? Perfect. Um, it's Mouchard oh, de Monsieur is. by Guerlain. The most beautiful That's lavender really fougere with this floral oh. mid and this beautiful tonka base. Yours is in much better shape than mine as well. Really? Yeah. My my tomatoes have evaporated somewhat in that. Really? One. This one feels immediately more more invigorating and more. It's got that bergamot at the top. Oh, I just love it. More sort of fresh fougere barbershop. So let me do Gorgeous. one more. That um, one more you've also talked about. It's it, I think it's one of the most complicated fragrances I own. You could call it a lavender fragrance, but it's a real kaleidoscope ah. of flavour. Uh, it, ah. is, it is Mem uh, by Borgoy. Um, it's, it's just incredible. I don't really understand it. No, I, I don't understand I don't how it can do what it does. But for, ev for any of you people who you know, think you're kind of real fragrance lovers and love really interesting, complex uh, fragrances, go and try yeah. Mem because it's really, really special and really amazing. And worth pointing out that Antonio Gardoni is an architect. Yes. So kind of He's not gone through the whole doing it, doing amazing the whole things. Family tradition, really special. Right, more to come from this house. Now, now, well. now onto a, a, a house which I could have included more from, but I've just got two from this house. It's a house I really love, and I followed the the nose behind it a lot, and I found it really exciting. The first one is a fragrance, which is just an absolute monster floral. It's kind of like no, the really. biggest, most complex, m m musky, oody floral. It is Ottoman Empire oh. by the house of Arif Sadore. So I didn't buy a, a full bottle, wow, I only wow, bought wow. it with a bit of juice left in. Um, That's more precious than the I mean, it actually bottle. says number five on it. So I don't know if it actually is the fifth bottle I've produced. Yeah. Um, quite That's possibly. Weird. But this is a very, for me, a very, very special oh. occasion. Yeah. And you know, a couple of sprays of this absolutely fills the room. It kind of feels like you are, a, you know, like you're a, a sultan or something. Can I steal a molecule of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. go for it, because okay. it's, it's, there's so much going on. <laughs> it, jasmine, champaka, a whole world of florals with this oud oh, underneath like it, which is, which is so round and complex, with muskiness, which just gives it more body and character. It makes you feel like you're wearing a crown and big robes. It's so this is so transportative. That makes what I what I would consider in any other circumstance the most opulent fragrances I've ever smelled. Mm. It makes them seem like Charles. Yeah, like absolutely nothing. It's, it's just, a different league it's of perfume so making bombastic. altogether. So another oh one uh, from this house. Again, I could have chosen a few, but this is one I don't always absolutely like gourmand fragrances. But this one is slightly uh, gourmand. Uh, this is um, Russian oud. So this ah, is a, an yes. out and out oud fragrance. But oh god, it's so amazing. Even if you. To smell, so this it comes with a wooden cap, and the wooden yeah. cap has taken on so much um, of the fragrance. It's such a huge performer. If you get it on your clothes, it lasts for months and months. It's uh, oud, kind of chocolatey, treacle, labdanum. It's so rich and thick. It's just like imagine you were you saw a tide of treacle, mm. and you were just overwhelmed by it. That's kind of what it's like wearing this. It's so rich, and there's definitely animalic funk. There's also real deer musk in it, but in a way, it's I don't. Such quality. I don't get bogged down by the the kind of funk because it's there is this. It's this, so much more. This hugging, sweet, chocolatey, oozy goodness, beautifulness. Do you know? It's I've really, got really, really quiet special. because it's, you just smell that, and, <laughs> it, it, and this is going to sound really like really sort of silly. But it makes you feel quite emotional when you yeah. smell something of that quality. Yeah. You just you kind of almost want to just sit there in a room and smell it for hours and just be transported. Yeah. I mean it's absolutely incredible. My god. It's really special. Um those two fragrances alone are incredible. Beat well, anything I've I'm gonna smelled. stick with you know, I, I would say I, I'm somebody who's not normally a gourmand lover, but I'm gonna stick with a 
another Gourmand fragrance. This one we've talked about a lot recently, and one, one that was in my winter list. Uh, it's from a oh. perfume we love. It's from Pin Parfum. It is Turkish uh, leather. Well, that's got to stand out. Um, so it's based around um, leather and lookum, which is um, uh, Turkish delight. Yeah. And amidst it, there's a load of incense and spice and oud and delicious, rich Fantastic. dates and dried fruit. It's I wore cool. this quite a lot in the winter. And it's <laughs> so, it's amazing how you keep smelling so many fragrances and you have something like this which feels so oh. unique, of such high quality. It's really special. It's intensely beautiful. I can't explain yeah. how beautiful that is. Oh, makes me so happy. The and the sort of stewed dates. And yeah. Oh. Right, what shall I do next? You want to drink let's it Let's stick with the, the, the big, rich, treacly things. I, I really love amber. I particularly love... You know, so amber is not um, a note. It, it's an accord, and it's normally made up of, of labdanum. And one, I love labdanum. One of my favourite yeah, labdanum fragrances... It's interesting you haven't chosen anything from this house, because it's a house that I think we both love a lot. It's from Perfumum Roma. It is yeah. Amber Aurea. Yeah. Um, and this is another fragrance which... It just lasts for, you don't measure the performance in hours, you measure it in days. <laughs> on your skin, well over 24 hours, and yeah. past the shower. On your clothes, weeks. You know, really yeah. weeks. It's just, the mo I mean, smell that. It's just such sticky, oh. rich, delicious, yeah. enticing um, labdanum amber. It, yeah, it's, it's absolutely it, stunning, isn't it? In, in a way, it's not enormously complex. It doesn't evolve hugely. It just lasts forever, bathing you in this delicious golden amber. And that's the thing as well. When a fragrance is that beautifully put together, and the notes <sighs> and the, the whichever accord it creates is so wonderfully done. Yeah, you don't even need the classical pyramid at all. If you like a smell like that, and you know it's going to stay with you for hours and hours. Yeah. Like it's you're winning. Many perfumers have struggled and failed to do something like that. Incredible, beautiful, beautiful, absolutely amazing. I have grown to really love rose. It's actually one of my yeah. favourite notes. A couple of years ago, I couldn't stand it. I now really, really love it. Um, I found this choice quite hard. I was very close to going for Malik Altaif um, mm. by Arigidori, which you know it is. It's forty percent uh, rose. It's probably the the best quality um, um, rose fragrance I own. Yeah. But as I said, this is, you know, I wanted a wardrobe, so I wanted maybe something different. So this is partly because it's also from a house and a perfumer, which I really, really love and admire. It's also because it's a slightly different um, rose. So this yeah. is um, tobacco rose oh, by, yeah. by Papillon. So I get, as opposed Gorgeous. to just an out and out, thick round, rich um, rose of Malakal. Well, Malakal, I've got more going on, but even the kind of thick, jammy rose of Portrait of Lady. This has also got a real greenness. Yeah. I really get, you know, the vine of it. It has a smile, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, I love it. And it's also got that Peru balsam as well, which yeah. is a very yeah. specific balsamic quality, which oh, I love this fragrance so much every time I wear it. Wonderfully earthy as well. And it's one that is, on, whilst you can wear it in the winter and it's intensely comforting, comforting, you can also wear it in the spring and on hotter days. So again, which is when I was putting together this, 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 um, wardrobe of 10 fragrances, I would include this. It's really yeah, beautiful, yeah. really beautiful fragrance. If you're a rose lover, go out and try it. And especially guys, if you think you're not a rose lover, oh, totally give it a chance it. because yeah. I think that greenness in a way makes it maybe a little bit more accessible to people yeah. who think they don't love rose. Well, the uh, first time the first time I ever I ever wore that, I, that's the thing I found more than even the rose was this green earthy aspect, mm. which I loved. And the rose is just beautiful and elegant. And again, lasts for ages and ages on yeah. it. it just it really, keeps really, going really, really and good. going and going really good Beautiful. right excellent so choice move from spring now as i've said in um, numerous videos i'm not a big fan of, of freshies and i don't really like summer aquatic light citrusy fragrances no, no. normally um but i have got one which i love and I, it's the one but it makes me really look forward to summer yeah um it's really special. It's from oh. the, you know, pretty much unknown house of Haeckel's and it's called Peckwell Bay. So Haeckel's is a little company oh, um, down in um, Margate, um, in the kind of, the hump of the kind of like the southeast yeah. of, of England. And I just wandered into the shop by chance and they make lots of products based around seaweed. So you've just got this... <laughs> it's so good, isn't it? This, this is... Oh, yeah, I mean the smell of this. I just—it's the most up, uplifting smell of, of everything I own. Yeah, it's, it's just absolutely it's perfect. Intensely bright, herbaceous, aniseedy, 
beautiful uplifting you get this slight kind of fresh bright seaweed quality there's also rosemary it feels so natural it feels like you're just wallowing in a in some salt marshes by the seaside do you know what i'm getting there more than the last time i smelled it i think it's it's sort of developing in the bottle i'm getting a lot more of the of this fennel licorice thing going yeah. on yeah it's so beautiful it makes citrus fruit look lazy yeah, absolutely. You know, it's it's so much and the other energy. Thing, it just it. And one of my, I've got my to problems buy that this year. Um, with, with a lot of freshies is that they just don't last. So I always no, wanted, no. I wanted to find a re I wanted to find a freshie which really lasts well, and this is one which yeah. lasts all day. If you go out and say like eight o'clock in the morning, you'll still smell it at eight o'clock at night. You know, you, you can't can, say that very often, can you? I, I love it, I love it, I love it. It's, it's the one fragrance that I really look forward to wearing uh, in summer. Amazing. And they've clearly not wasted a load of money on sort of branding the bottle with different designs and things. There's no. a wonderful there's a wonderful sort of apothecary thing to it somehow, yeah. isn't there? Like, what I'm really pleased about, so the, the, it, when really I bought it, the name was 51 degrees by 99 north by 1 by 2130 east. Easy to remember. Yeah, which is a tiny bit difficult to remember. But it's now called... Um, Pegwell Bay, yeah. which is much easier. So that, that's the location from which um, the seaweed was picked. The, so yeah, the you know, it's, it's, sat-nav, so to speak. It's a real uh, kind of GPS location. Yeah. So it's really supposed to be kind of an olfactory um, snapshot of this location. Yeah. My last fragrance, I'm just going to go and get it because it's in its own box because it comes in quite a big bottle. Um, it's one of my newest purchases. Oh, I don't think I've seen um, this. I'm not... You know, I think it's quite clear from the number of fragrances he's got. I'm not the kind of person that's going to have... Um, a signature scent, um, nor would I suggest you do, but if I were to, uh, I, I, I think this would I be it. I'm I've got to show you the bottle. <laughs> Look at this. It's the most you know, extraordinary, extravagant bottle. It is uh, Chipro Palatal hey, um, the from Super. the house of MDCI um, by the oh. wonderful, uh, great Bergeron du Chaffaut. Many would say this is his um, magnum opus. I would agree. So some people have, have, have talked about um, have suggested this has been reformulated. MDCI strongly deny that, you know, vehemently yeah. deny. I don't know, I haven't smelt, I've only smelt it in the last few years, but it's just this amazing green, resinous, beautiful thing, which there are aldehydes at the start and there is a kind of a vintage feel to it, but it somehow feels incredibly modern. It feels Sophisticated and elegant, yeah. but it feels risk-taking at the same time. Interestingly, last galbanum is that yeah, the lots of galbanum, which is, is that big kind of green, you slightly like that, bitter. A lot of things, yeah. Gives you that old school vibe to it. Let's, let's have a little squirt. I love this juice, and I keep wanting to buy. Interestingly, it. I, I wore it uh, the other day, and someone said, "Oh, you're wearing something chocolatey." Okay. Which, which you wouldn't think. Look at that spray as well. It's great, isn't it? But people have associations, don't they? And you yeah, never but, quite. There's a kind of a rich sort of kind of where. sweetness to it. That's maybe where it comes from. See, do you know, on the first spray, on the first smell, I wouldn't say she prepared it at all. And I found this the last time I tried it as well. And then actually, immediately, within about five seconds, if it's smell, But if you smell what's yeah. around us, yeah, not what's actually pure, what's, what's here, absolutely. it's this kind of rich, resinous, complex, beautiful, but somehow wearable. Oh, oh, it's absolutely it's, just, it's now just kind of filling that space, I think, where I kind of sprayed all over the organ. Your, your organs must smell lovely. But bear in mind, so we've sprayed 19 fragrances, yeah, yeah. 20 fragrances, and this one is just filling the space like a, a nuclear mushroom cloud. Yeah. And it's not loud in that sense either. This no, 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 it's not. It's, it's, it's not very, bolty it's or so loud. It's so rounded. It's not punchy at all. It's just a wonderful enveloping thing. Oh, I love it. So anyway, so those are my, my God. those are my ten. And so I, the way I chose them is ten to kind of, if I had to have a wardrobe to wear for life. So I needed to have some things a little bit lighter rather than big punchy things. But I like Dan's list because what he's done here is he's chosen... 10 fragrances to give to Joe for free. Yeah, very generous of me. So, Which is so nice. Yeah. And you can have all of mine and we'll swap. Yeah. And yeah, look Perfect. Out. Anyway, so do comment uh, below and say if you could narrow it down to 10, what would you, what would you uh, have? It's hard, isn't it? It's really hard. And I was, I, I was quite gobsmacked. I left out uh, things I love. I left out Leda de Zamorokane, which yeah. I adore, Coromandel, same, which same. I adore, Shalimar, which I, I really adore, um, Intoxicated by by yeah. which I really love, which I assumed were going to be in the list, but I was, because I was trying to find this wardrobe, it's really difficult. I could have easily done a top 75. I, f I found, I, I sort of, yeah, I did the same thing. I, by my own, my own boundaries of things I'm going to buy replacement bottles of, mm. um, some things really missed the list, which have been with me for a long time. The green Irish tweeds, the, tu mm. the Tuscan leathers. Yeah, Elodie doesn't I will buy another bottle of it. Just didn't yeah, quite make the yeah. cut. 
there are lots of things and this thing could change in a heartbeat tomorrow we might yeah. find actually you know what i'm back in love with but for today for today for this today hour, this is this, it. these are our top this 10 is it. so comment below tell us your top 10s um, but until next time happy sniffing Bye.